Morning guys, we're out again this morning for a walk. Today we're at New Lanark World Heritage Village. I'm glad I come down the day for first visions here is just coming down the hill there. I can see the, the, the first early falls, the amount of water that's coming over there is phenomenal. So when we get round to the falls of Clyde, I can expect the, the yeah, quite a sight to see. I'll let you see as we come further down. You can see the force of the water coming across the, the this is a wee lesser falls that you can see just round there's a viewing point but we'll be a wee shoot look down there later on. There's the first signpost. We'll take you along to the falls of Clyde. I like the sign at the top of this one. It's got the new building and it's dated 1798. We're going to the visitor centre at the mill. All the slow skates. A lovely place to come up and have a visit. Last time I was up here that used to turn round so I've obviously switched the water off to it. No worries. Okay, we'll take a wee walk further round and we'll see what we can see for there. And because it's the winter months, most of the wee places are all shut. These are usually wee bespoke shops that sell all the local handmade stuff. Because it's the winter months it's pretty much closed. It's quite popular down here. Normally they've got a couple of guys sitting out here in the old mills. And uh, another one that like a turning machine that's sitting to be operated with strings. So it's quite cool when we've seen them. So we're coming up to the first set of the wee falls, so I'll bring you back and show you them just when we get there. Back guys, I don't know if you'll hear me over the top of the noise of these the small falls, so I can imagine what the big ones up at the top will be at the quarry line. So I'll bring you around and let you see in there out. Some amount of volume of water coming across. This is we visitor centre room. This is new one since I've been here last, so I'll be a wonder and see what we can see. Remember the last time we got a live web link on to Green Perry Peregrine Falcons further in at the, the actual main Corrie Lynn Falls? Got all the touchy feely boxes. Great when you can put your hand in and you haven't a clue what's in it. Used to love doing that when we were a kid. I see lots of badgers up here as well. It's quite good for the kids, we've got a lot of touchy feely things and feathers, leaves, stones, fun guys. Plenty of information. Haha, <laughs> welcome to the bat booth. That's for the bat enclosure. You can hear it now. And we're going to take a walk up onto the hillside, and uh, I think it's a couple of miles walk out onto the, the falls. Not sure what the trails are like, but we'll get a bit closer along with we'll, we'll, we'll what you see. So the walkway up onto the falls. 
takes you up onto the top path. I don't know if you can hear, but if you can hear the volume of the, the water that's around us and how it's incredible. It just shows you the, the force of nature after so much rain yesterday. You can get it today and come out and enjoy the falls. Falls of Clyde Wildery Life Reserve. You hear the noise of the waterfall in the background. So we're going along to the Falls of Clyde today. The tracks are not too bad, so we're along so far and one will be stopped a little bit further along. Another wee weird just up in the river a bit. I don't know if you can hear me over the noise of the water, but if you look over the far side, just where it's breaking to the bank side, you'll see a heron sitting there. So it's right down onto the riverside now, so the walkway, a board walkway all the way along. It's a raised up, so it's got all the anti-grips and everything like that, so it's quite easy to walk on. It takes you right along the riverside. And quite a nice morning for a walk, so quite enjoying it. It's been busy early, I'd have been down early but when I arrived here there was a heavy downpour of rain. Didn't expect to see that because when I left the house it was absolutely stunning. Clear blue skies. But the, the shower's passed on now and we've now got back to blue skies here again. The river's well up. You can see that. Be happy these are raised walkways. <laughs> but I'm following the Badger's Trail. Taking along so there's you notice boards all the way along telling you all the different things. Yeah, it's a long time since I've been up here. Used to come up here quite regular when our kids were small. But it's like the old thing, you get out of the way doing things, it's on your doorstep. A great excuse to come up here and have a walk along here in a nice fresh morning, bring you guys with us and let you see how we're getting on. I can't wait to see the falls because if it's the, the ones back there are any to go by, these ones are going to be thunderous. Especially after so much rain yesterday. So I'll bring you back along with the trail a wee bit. This is the side wall of the substation. Substation being there, and they've disguised it with a full size, full size of the wall painting a badger. That's absolutely incredible. Well, we, I, whoever did that, they've done a really good job. Well done. Bonington Power Station. You can see the substation. That's where the hydro water comes in for the falls. Bypasses for the top comes down here. That's. It's obviously a big turbine that's worn through, and they'll put it out here to show you. You can see the wear on the, the propeller impellers there, just on the side. Each of the power stations are equipped with two vertical shaft Francis turbine rotators, 375 revolutions per minute, coupled to an 11 kilovolt generator. The two point generator up, they can rate it to take up to 5.5 million watts, and the two stone generator 3 million watts, giving a total output of 17 million watts. This turbine runner is installed in Bonington in 1997 and it remained in service until 2014 so, oh it doesn't work anymore, must be. I didn't know that, I thought it was still running. I don't know if you can actually hear the water as it thunders down the pipes. Feel the vibration on the ground. Okay, we're going to climb up the house to get the first view of the falls. This could be the first vantage point, but another signpost. This one, ah, oh, very apt. A raven. Let me see, a raven for a raven about Scotland. Had to find this one, I'm sure. Eh? So we'll take these out and see if we can see in into the first view point. You certainly see the spray anyway.
no really a good view for here, we'll go further around and see if we can get a better view for another point. I'm sure there's another couple of spots up the top that have got view points. I think this is really the worst part of the full walk, there's a wee climb up here, it's not too strenuous and it's still got anti-slips on the steps. So, keeps you a, a good track of things. Good sturdy pair of boots I dare say, but no need for welly boots I don't think. A couple of wee seats for a restful to rest your old legs after we climb up the hill and see where the pipe takes a turn. Well guys, there's the first view of the falls. Absolutely incredible. Normally the falls to the left is the, the ones that normally the one to the right you can just see it is always usually dry in the summertime. But after a spate of rain like yesterday, well in spate today. See in the back there, guys. Coral Inn. That's where we've come up to see. There's a phenomenal amount of water that's going over the top of that at the minute. So it's been really good. I'm glad I took the effort to come up and see it. So, even for me to see it now. I'm glad I found the notice board. It gives me a wee bit more clarification of what I was trying to say earlier on to you there. That uh, on average the Clyde carries 25 tonnes of water per second. That's more than 300 bathtubs full. But this can rise to 250 tonnes after heavy rain, which it is today. The highest ever road flood was recorded in 1994 at 575 tonnes per second, which is a phenomenal amount of water. Uh, it's quite breathtaking when you look at it from here. So if you're ever wanting to walk up to the Falls of Clyde, make sure you come up after a rainy day because it's, it's quite spectacular. Another vantage point, pretty much further round above the, the falls itself. It's a long time since I've been round at this side, I actually forgot this one was here. So we'll see how this goes and if we see any better from here. Should be much closer to the falls itself. You can certainly hear them anyway. Wow. Pretty much right above them, this is as they take the first dip. Another falls over there. Another falls over there. That's pretty spectacular. What a noise! A lot of water. Pretty certain this is the viewing area where the, the peregrines are nesting there on the rock face across the way there. I'm sure there's a sign up here for a hide. It's a long time since I've been up here. Ah, it looks like a, a hide up the top here. Oh, there's a wee hole there. Oh, that's quite a new centre where the you know, more comfort and watch the, the peregrines. I think we've got a camera set up in here 24 hours a day. That's another where the telly is. The other side there, that's where they're nesting in a ledge across there. You can see over in the far rock face there's a, a big clump of roots. That's where the nest is because you can see just to my right there there's a pillar with a mobile 24 hour camera monitoring it all the time. And it's amazing what you forget. I forgot there was a second set of falls further round. So I've walked about another mile through the, the main quarry Lynn. I can't remember what this one's called. But I'll put that in the links below. It's quite spectacular as well. I think you can actually get a bit closer because I see people up on the right hand side there. So we'll take a walk around. This is Bonington Iron Bridge. A lot of years for that's been seen any use. I think you'll go to that second wee island right in the middle of the two falls. I'm certain we'll not be going across here today anyway. Well, I was hoping there was a bridge to get over the other side. It's got a kind of a dam here that's stemming the flow of the water. You can see the, 
big concrete bollards which 1925 Ransom and Rapier Limited Ipswich they drop down stem the flow of the water the river tide coming through there you can see over View the other side where it's getting a little bit of stem through the dam. We've crossed over the river now, we're over at the other opposite side, and uh, I think it's about a mile walk further back down this way, back to the Corrie Lynn. But uh, I can imagine the, the, the views for this side will be much more spectacular because they're getting a better angle, uh, the falls coming through, and this secondary set of falls that we're just literally coming around the corner at the now actually forgot all about how can you do that eh? It's that many years I've been up here and you always come up to the Coral Inn and turn and go back. You walk another mile and a half up river, you've got these ones. So I don't know if I can just quickly turn this one around you now. You'll see them in the background right below us. There you get the review. There you go. So these ones are every bit as spectacular as the first ones and uh, a lot quieter. If nobody comes up this side I'll bring you back a little bit. It says to you earlier on, take a walk about a mile further upstream to the Corrie Lynn and come to these ones here. We follow the path round to the other side now, take down the old bridge. Sometimes the smaller falls are just a little bit of spectacular. Ah, it's been a great old day, quite surprised. Again, so you don't visit a place regularly, we used to come in here with the kids, but not been for a lot of years. You forget how beautiful it is. Especially when it's full straight. See what happens when you get yourself out. You could be sitting in the house bored, sitting saying, well, oh, what if, what if, it's a miserable day. But if you make the effort to come out, this is what you're graced by. Absolutely spectacular. Well, we've come round to the final viewpoint. There's more further around, but I'm going to stop here for a wee bit and get a cup of tea. We'll talk about a cup of tea with a, a brew with a view. Colin, this one's for you, mate. Stuart, the two years would love this one. Perfectly a brew for a view. Well, here's one for you, Stuart and Colin. A brew with a view. Certainly got that today anyway. Just about to enjoy a nice cup of tea. Well, cheers guys. Time for a cuppa. Great when you bring the wee jet boy away and you can get a nice cup of tea. Robert Owen's School for Children. The old mills. We'll have a look inside, see what we can see. We can see anything that gives us any more details of how they used to operate. This is going up into the side of the cafe. A nice big coffee. 
at the shop, the shop, but it's not, it's actually open. Just a different way into it. Lots of old fashioned sweets. It's closed. No jars of sweeties. Guys, that's us finished for the day. What a great walk it's been. Absolutely fantastic. Up to the first falls, the falls of Clyde, or otherwise known as the Corrie Lynn, then up to Bennington Lynn, which is other ones about a mile further around the course. So it's about five and a half, six miles all in today. So really good. So if you enjoyed the video, usual, give us a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment below, leave it below and I'll see if I can answer them for you. And if you've not subscribed, please subscribe. It helps the channel a little bit. This will cost you now. And uh, until the next time, be good, stay safe, catch up soon. Bye.